After spending your time on learning advanced Hello World tutorial of some third-party library and trying to code something more useful, you hit your first problem. Scavenging the internet for help on seemingly simple issues burns more of your precious time with little return. You think there has to be a better way to move your project along. For my current project, after considering a couple of options, I chose to develop a custom communication protocol to connect two programs. One runs on a microcontroller, which is Arduino, and another on a full-blown computer, Raspberry Pi. In this post, I'd like to share my experience of going through the development process. My project requirements are 1. Make the communication over a serial link more resilient to errors. 2. Use a messaging protocol that requires less resources to handle. And 3. Write portable code to share between Arduino and Raspberry Pi. Arduino and Raspberry Pi are connected via a serial cable. The data on the serial link is streamed. By default, the link doesn't provide packet framing such that either side of the communication doesn't know where a message begins or ends. This creates a problem when a program tries to interpret a message which is not received completely. To help the program distinguish one message from another, a stream of data should include some message delimiter. If my program transmitted human readable messages, for example in ASCII, I may use a new line character as a delimiter. But ASCII encoded data uses up more bandwidth to move across the wire than binary encoded data. For example, to send a number 12345 and delimit it with a new line character, the message transmission hardware would need to send 6 bytes, 1 byte per character. If the program used binary encoding instead, the hardware would only need to transmit 3 bytes, 2 bytes to represent the number, plus 1 byte to represent the new line. It would take half the time to send a binary encoded message than to send a human readable ASCII encoded text. There is one problem with using some random character like the new line with binary the reason is that every ASCII character is represented by a numeric value as any other data unit. For example, a new line is represented by number 10. If my program sends some sensors value 10 and a new line as a delimiter, which one should the receiving program treat as an indicator of the message end? To address this, I have to use a different approach to delimit the packets. One efficient and simple protocol to achieve this is COBS. With COPS protocol, packets are delimited with a zero byte. In order to not confuse end of packet with other data, the algorithm would replace every zero byte with an offset that points to the next zero byte. Every packet is prepended with one overhead byte that contains the very first offset. If a message doesn't contain any zero bytes, then overhead byte points to the end of packet. Now, the receiving program won't get confused about where a message ends because a zero byte has only one meaning, to represent the end of packet. One issue I have is that the zero byte sits at the end of a packet. This may become a problem when the program which attempts to process incoming messages starts reading the serial stream for the first time. When the program detects the zero byte, it has no easy way of backtracking the bytes of a packet that came before the zero byte to verify that they represent a complete message. Given that reasoning, I moved the packet delimiter to the front, so it represents a start of a packet. Once the program extracts a packet using the above framing protocol, it needs to know what type of a message is contained within that packet. Here are the steps that Arduino goes through when checking new messages. One. Append the available number of bytes from the serial stream to internal buffer. 2. Locate the start of packet by checking one byte at a time and drop non-start of packet bytes to synchronize with the stream. 3. Read and record overhead byte. 4. Skip past packet ID field to the tag field. 5. Validate the message type and determine how many more bytes are required for the message to be complete. 6. If all required bytes are available, decode the packet data using modified COBS codec. 7. Process the message. And 8. Move back to step 2 to check if there are any more messages. Most of the code for encoding and decoding messages is shared between Arduino and Raspberry Pi. 
This simplifies testing and debugging because that work can be performed on a desktop computer. The only difference is in interfacing with a serial hardware device. The program on RPI uses serial link parameters from Termios and system calls to interact with the hardware. The link parameters, if not used with care, can induce minor headache. During runtime, I would get occasional errors coming from the codecs. After adding a unit test that would continuously read state messages from Arduino and analyzing the output, a reproducible pattern has emerged. All packets are expected to be 20 bytes long. The malformant packet has only 19 bytes. The received data is missing one byte and it looks like that byte is a packet ID. But where does it disappear? It could be on Arduino or in wires during transport or somewhere on RPI. To test if the program on Arduino sends proper messages, I set up an additional serial interface to duplicate state messages. That interface was hooked up to a terminal program screen running on RPI. The screen would simply output the data it receives to a file. Upon inspection, all packets that arrived from the debug serial interface were well formed. To check if the messages are transmitted to RPI without damage, I hooked up an oscilloscope to the malfunctioning serial line and verified that the data was in fact delivered to RPI without problems. Note the missing byte 0D. Every time the test was rerun, the same message number 13 had a problem. The ASCII table indicates that value 13 is a carriage return character. This led me to check serial link parameters that are set up with Termios. Lo and behold, after playing with text mod for the link, my code had this left over. The serial driver as instructed would ignore every byte that had value 13 after switching back to raw mode, which tells the I.O. to just pass all bytes to the reading program. The decoding errors were gone. Lesson learned.